Kavod, glory to Elohim in the highest. The king is coming, the king is here. Hoshiana, Hosanna. What does the word Hoshiana mean? Please, Hashem, please save us now. Please, Hashem, bring success now. Let us prosper now. To him, the only God and Savior, and Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lion of the tribe of Yehuda, Yeshua of Nazareth. To him be glory, dominion, blessing, and majesty before all time, now and forever and ever. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the son of David. Blessed be the Lord of David. I greet you in the precious merit of King Messiah, the son of David, the Lord of David. And by God's love and grace, I want to speak to us today on the theme, the Lord of David and the Son of David. The Lord of David and the Son of David. Go with me, please, to Psalm 118. Psalm 118, we want to pick it up from verse 25. Psalm 118, verse 25. The king is coming. The king is here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the king. And blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen be amen. Baruch Hashem. So in Psalm 118 verse 25, we have this text. O Hashem, do say, we beseech you. O Hashem, we beseech you, do send prosperity. That's the verse. So in verse 25, there's a call for help. And the word, brethren, is Hoshiana. Hoshiana, which means, please, Hashem, please save us now. Please, Hashem, bring success now. It's a plea for help. It's a plea where we recognize we cannot save ourselves. Okay? And that word has come across to us in English as Hosanna. But I want to take us back to the Hebrew and then bring us forward. So Hoshiana means, please, Hashem, save us now. But it has come down to us as the word Hosanna which means a, a, a form of praise. Now go with me to verse 26. In verse 26, we have this. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Adonai, in the names of Hashem. So I want you to look at this text because here it is, you're transitioning now from help, crying out for help, you're crying out now and you are praising, you are making a confident assertion. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So keep in mind, verse 25, we are crying out for help. Please save now. Send prosperity now. Save us now. We need help now. Verse 26, we are declaring that help has come. And we are praising and we are offering thanksgiving. Hosanna in the highest. And so let's go with me to Matthew 21. We have seen a shift as you look, verse 25 and 26. Let's go now to Matthew 21 because we're going to see the same text playing out because remember we are talking about the lord of david and the son of david so in matthew 21 from verse 9 matthew 21 from verse 9 we see this a blessed messiah is coming into jerusalem and this is what happens the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed i love that crowds going ahead of him and those who followed so yeshua is in the center of the procession and they're crying out Hoshiana or Hosanna to the son of David. Notice what they're crying out. That's verse 25. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So I want you to see how the Spirit of God is using Hoshiana as a plea for help and as a declaration of worship and praise. Oh my God, look at it, brethren. This, 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 is, this is powerful because we are talking about the Lord of David and the son of David. And you are seeing here a wonderful insight that is coming forth. So look with me also to verse 15 of that same chapter. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw uh, the wonderful things that he had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant. Again, I want you to see what is playing out. They, the Spirit of God is moving upon this crowd to declare Psalm 118. Why? Because the prophetic hope of David was being materialized. They recognized that this one is the son of David. 
and they are praying, they are praying, they are rejoicing. They are saying, God, we have waited for you. Save us now. And now on this day, this word, this word is being fulfilled. Oh, my God. Go with me. And, and, and you, you, you're seeing this playing out. Verse 16, it says, do you, they said to him, do you hear what these children are saying? And Yeshua said to them, yes, have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes? You have prepared praise for yourself. So here, out of the mouth of all these children, praise was coming forth. Where were they bringing that from? From Psalm 118. That's why it's so powerful to know that Hoshiana, please save us, and Hosanna, glory, praise to God in the highest. Why? Because the son of David had come. Oh my God. I'm so excited about bringing this word to us because when you, uh, your eyes are open to, to know that Yeshua is indeed the son of David and the Lord of David, it's going to transform how you walk as a believer, as a disciple of one who's following the Lord of David and the son of David. So go with me also to Mark chapter 11. We're going to look at this account in the Gospels. Again, remember Yeshua is coming into Jerusalem and the Spirit of God is moving upon the crowd to declare this message. So from verse 9, Mark chapter 11, those who went in front and those who followed were shouting. I pray God that the early disciples shouted this and we, the, the, the latter disciples, will be shouting this. There must be a crescendo. There must be a coming together of what went before and what come after. In the last days, we are declaring the same thing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Prepare the way for the seed of David. He's coming. Oh, my God. So verse 9, Hosanna. Notice it has moved from a plea to a declaration, a confident declaration of worship. What a song to keep on your mind. What a word. You see, you are going through life and you may be going through a Hosanna stage. Lord, help me. I need help now. But even before that help is manifested, you say, Hosanna to God in the highest. Oh, my God. So blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And look at verse 10. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Are you beginning to see what's happening there? Blessed is he who, who blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Why are they saying that? Because Yeshua is the embodiment. He is the son of David that the prophets prophesied about. And now he's coming. Here is the son of David. He's coming riding on a, 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 on a donkey. Your king is coming to you. Blessed be the king. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is here. Full moon, the kingdom is here. Okay? And so we begin to see Hosanna. That word de depicts where we could be in two places. And it's not an either or because sometimes we're in that place of Hosanna. Lord, save me now. And it's not just save me, it's save us, right? But you understand because you want a corporate salvation, not just a personal salvation. A personal salvation must expand to a corporate salvation. Save us, Lord. What I want done for me, I want done for everybody. I want justice for me, but I want justice for everybody. Because Hoshiana means please save us now. And so you and I might be in that place, that place of pleading for help or, or thanking God for what has been done. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Well, I look at it. Hosanna in the highest. What does it mean, Hosanna in the highest? It means, please, Lord, from the highest place, send help. From the, from, from the supreme court, from the highest to the supreme court in the heaven, send help from there and let it come to the earth. And also I'm saying, Hosanna to him who is in the highest. So it's a both concepts because remember, Hebrew is multidimensional. You have to see it on, on many levels at the same time, all at once. So we are saying, God, from your high throne, send me help from the highest. I appeal to the highest. But Lord, I'm recognizing when that help comes onto the earth in my situation, then my response is, Hosanna! Glory to God who is in the highest because from the highest, he's sending help. So we are blessing him in the highest because we recognize he is king over all. Adonai is king. Adonai was king. Adonai will be king forever and ever. And this, oh my, my God, is an actualization. It, it, it is the embodiment. It is the personification of the hopes of the prophets. And that's what was happening in Jerusalem on that day. And it said those who went before said that. But you and I should know that the son of David is returning. And those of us who come after must have that same cry. Hosanna and Hosanna, glory to the son of David, because we are looking for the king of the Jews to return to us in our time. Glory to God. Go with me to, Mark, to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, we've seen the same account. Luke chapter 19. In Luke chapter 19 from verse 37. 
we see the same thing. Again, you're looking at it in different angles. Luke chapter 19, verse 37. As soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples, oh my God, began to praise God joyfully with loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting. What are they shouting? Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Yeshua answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. I pray that God will move upon us so that we cannot keep silent. Hold not your peace. Hold not your peace. Declare the king is here. The king is coming. The king is in our midst. The son of David is here. Hoshiana, Hoshiana, and also Hosanna. Glory to God in the highest. This is what is being played out, brethren, and it is wonderful for us to begin to consider. Go with me to Mark chapter 12. So we see that Yeshua is the son of David. We've seen that clearly in this week's Torah portion. We've seen that Yeshua, legitimate, biological, he is the heir of David. He is the Messiah. And to diminish his Jewishness is to, to not understand that he is a descendant from King David. Go with me to, to Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, verse 35. Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, verse 35. We're beginning to see this. And Yeshua began to say as he taught in the temple. So this is our master, the son of David. He's in the temple because I mean, David had a heart to build the temple. And now the son of David is in the temple. Have you seen it? How is it that the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? How is it that the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself said in the Holy Spirit, and he's quoting Psalm 110, the, the one verse that is quoted most in all the apostolic scriptures, Psalm 110. The Holy Spirit said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand with a view towards me making your enemies beneath your feet or making your enemies your footstool. David himself calls him Lord. So Yeshua gave us a powerful little principle here. So in what sense, in what sense is he his son? And the large crowd enjoy listening to him. I love that. In what sense? You see, when you're dealing with scripture, in what sense is he his son? So David calls him Lord, but David also, then David is seeing that his Lord would also become his son. How is that going to work? So in what sense are we talking about? You see, you need to know the sense in which you speak. And if you just operate in one sense, you would, you would mitigate the other senses. So you have to have that heavenly perspective and the earthly perspective. So in what sense are you talking about? Are you speaking spiritually or are you speaking physically? And you and I, we tend to get tripped up with that. We, 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 we're unable to function on, on a multi-dimensional plane. So we lock into one plane. But I have to ask you, what sense are you talking about? If you're speaking in the physical sense, then this plays out. If you're speaking on the heavenly sense, then this plays out. And it's not either or it's both because God is Eckhart. So in what sense, in what sense? Keep that in mind. When the people gathered, the, 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 the scribes were there to give the sense. People look and say, look and see that black and white. But they ask you, in what sense? What, what does it mean? It's not enough to just to know what God said. You need to know what God means. In what sense are you speaking? And I want to show that language to us. So in what sense is he his son? Oh, my God. All right? So look with me. To, to, so so you, you're seeing what, what here that, that David calls him Lord. And that's why I'm making the understanding that the Lord of David becomes the son of David. I, I mean, I, I find this is it's so exciting to begin to consider. Go with me again to Matthew 22. I, I love to give you various views of it so that you can see it in a multi-dimensional way. Someone just say, look at right here. No, you've got to look at it in, in various angles. A multi, it's, a di it's a diamond and he's turning, turning, turning and giving us insight as we could receive it. So Matthew 22, verse 41. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yeshua asked them a question. What do you think about the, the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, then how does David in the spirit call him Lord? If he's only the son, how could David call him Lord? The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until... 
I put your enemies beneath your feet. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? In what sense are you talking about, right? No one was able to answer him a word, nor did anyone dare from that day on ask him another question. Because you see, our Messiah was operating on many levels at the same time. And they weren't able to accept. You see, because John says that, that this son of David is coming. And they asked, he said, let me ask you a question. The Baptist, the John, is he from heaven or from earth? And he said, if you say of heaven, he's going to say, well, why didn't you believe John? And if you say of earth, they're going to be afraid because all the people see John as a prophet. He said, well, we, we don't know. And yet, Yeshua answered, because you don't want to reconcile what's happening, then I wouldn't tell you anything. Because if you only locked into your view, then you have your answer. You don't need to know anything. And anything else, that's a wonderful example of dealing with people who are locked in, dogmatic, and say, it must be so, it can't be any other way, this is how it had to be. No, I've come to learn with God that he is God. Hashem is Hashem. And the way he interprets scripture and brings it out, oh my God, I need to ask the Father, what sense, in what sense are you dealing with here? Because I want to be able to say, this is true, and this is true. The baptism of John is from heaven, and the baptism of John is also from men. And you need to be able to embrace both and in, 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 in embrace the tension as we go forward. And so we see in here a powerful text. So go back with me now to 2 Samuel 7, a text that we would have alluded to today, but I want to take the opportunity to read it because this is a text that you and I must know. This whole passage in 2 Samuel chapter 7, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. Now it came about when the king lived in his house. This is David. And Hashem had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. Then the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of Elohim dwells with ten curtains. Nathan said to him, Go, do all that is in your mind, for Hashem is with you. But in that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and say to my servant David, Thus says Hashem, Are you the one who should build me a house to dwell in? Oh my God. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt, even to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, even in a tabernacle. Wherever I have gone with all the sons of Israel. Did I speak a word which, with one of the tribes uh, which I commanded to, uh, to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? This is God talking to Nathan, all right? No, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the past year, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people Israel. Notice, my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and I've cut out all your enemies from before you and I will make you a great name, like the names of the great men who are on the earth. I will also appoint you a place for my people Israel and will plan them that they may live in their own place and not be disturbed again, nor will the wicked afflict from them anymore as formerly. Even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also declares for you that the Lord will make a house for you. You want to build a house for me? I will make a house for you, David. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, that's death, I will raise up your descendant, singular, after you, who will come forth from you, a son of David, and I will establish his kingdom oh my god he shall build a house for my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom forever i will be a father to him and he will be a son to me when he commits iniquity i will correct him with the rod of men and the strokes of the sons of men but my love and kindness shall not depart from him as i took it away from saul whom i removed from before you verse 16 your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all of these words and all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Are you seeing what's happening there? God Almighty is speaking through Nathan the prophet, and he's speaking to David. David wants to build a house, and God said, I'm going to build you a house. I'm going to raise up a descendant after you, after you have died. And that descendant, he says, if he commits iniquity, hmm, so, but then he goes on to say, 
this, this kingdom will endure forever. So which, in what sense is he talking about? Is he talking about Solomon? Or is he talking about the greater son of David that is yet to come? I hope you see in what sense the Spirit of God is talking about. He's speaking about Solomon. He's speaking about the greater son of Solomon, the son of David, the Lord of David. That's why you need to know this text. And to know that the Messiah must be Jewish. He must be of the tribe of Yehuda. Because this is the prophecy. This is not just speaking about David. It's speaking about the greater son of David that is to come. And that's what the Messiah was talking about. And that's what the people on the day of, in, in Jerusalem, when they recognized what the prophet had spoken, what Samuel wrote down. Oh my God, my eyes are seeing the fulfillment of the son of David coming. Glory to God in the highest. You should be excited about what is happening here. Look at David's response, verse 18. Then David the king went in and sat before Hashem. And he said, who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? You consider your work and your growth in Messiah. Who am I? Who is this house, Father, that you have brought me this far into this understanding? And yet, this was insignificant in your eyes, O Lord God. For you have spoken also of the house of your servant concerning the distant future. Oh my God. All right? And this is the custom of man, O Lord God, the way of, of the Torah. Again, what more can David say to you? Who am I? What is our strength? What is our piety? What more can we say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. For the sake of your word and according to your own heart, you have done all this great thing to let your servant know. For this reason, you are great, O Lord God. This is this man praying, oh God. And, and there is none like you, and there is no God beside you, according to all that we have heard in our ears. And what one nation on the earth is like your people, Israel, yesterday, today, and forever, whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, to make a name for himself, so as to, to do a great thing. For you, uh, uh, for, for you an awesome thing for your land before your people whom you have redeemed for yourself from Egypt, from nations and, and their God. Look at the language. Look how David is praying and praising. For you have established for yourself your people Israel as your own people forever. And you, O oh Lord, have become their God. Now therefore, O oh Lord your God, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant as his house, confirm it forever and do as you have spoken. What a testimony. Lord, you have spoken by the mouth of your prophets. Do as you have said. Do as you have spoken. We are cheering God on to do his will. And that's what we pray. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We want what is said in the heaven, from the sense of heaven, to be also from the sense of earth. Lord, let your will be done. What you have spoken, Lord, let it be done. Let your kingdom advance more and more. All right? Okay? And he said, that your name may be magnified forever, saying, the Lord of hosts is God over Israel and he's gone to Israel and may the house of your servant David be established before you are you understanding for you O Lord of hosts the God of Israel have made a covenant with your servant saying I will build you a house and therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you you could pray back God's word to him because you have the courage to declare Lord do as you have said now O Lord God you are, and, and your words are truth, and you, and, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant. I love it. May it please you, Lord. Please save us. We are begging. Please do it. And then may you be pleased to do it. We are praying, Lord. We are begging you. Please do it. And then we say, may, may, may you be pleased to do it. All right? It, it, it's a, a nice play on words. You're pleased, and may you be pleased to do it. Oh, my God. All right? Uh, 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 to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever before you. For you, O oh Lord, God, have spoken, and with your blessing, may the house of your servant be blessed forever. I want you to look at that prayer and read it over and over again, because when you understand that prayer, you will understand the message, the, the, the very covenant, and why Gabriel came with a message to Miriam and said, listen, he's going to be the son of the highest, and he's going to rule over the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. This is what they're talking about. So if you have a kingdom that is not being restored to Israel, then what kingdom are you building? We are speaking kingdom, but we are speaking about the messianic era, the kingdom of heaven. We are speaking about what is in the highest coming into the earth with David being king and David being king Messiah. Oh my God, this, 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 this is what you and I are beginning to understand. So there's this sign 
of the covenant. What is the sign? The enduring dynasty. And what is the covenant? It is unconditional. God says, I, I, I will do it. And what is the response? Faith and obedience. David had to operate in faith and obedience. In other words, the obedience of faith. And then what is the promise that he got in this covenant? An abiding kingdom. Your kingdom, your house will endure forever. So all of that is incorporated there. So the promise of King Messiah, oh my God, the expectation and the hope is being fulfilled. So Lord save us now becomes praise God and his Messiah, we are saved. Are you seeing the transition? One is Lord save us. Now we are saying praise God and his Messiah. From the highest, he has sent his Messiah to save us. Oh my God, this is the Lord of David have become the son of David. I want you to get that, underscore that. The Lord of David had become the son of David. When you go to Isaiah chapter 11, we read that every Shabbat. It talks about a, a root coming out, a, a, a stump of Jesse coming out. This is King Messiah. So that's what the prophets would have gotten that from because they knew what Samuel spoke about. And so the Messiah of Israel, the Messiah of Israel, what does Messiah mean? The anointed one. You know that word. Messiah is not a last name. Right? Christ is not a last name. It means anointed, anointed one. And particularly, it is for the kings of Israel. So Messiah really means anointed king. So when you say Jesus Christ, you know what you're saying? Jesus the king. Or Jesus the anointed king. All right, and, and, and I, you, you, uh, I will say this again and again, and it get, gets me into trouble, but I keep saying it again. If, if, if he's not the Messiah of Israel, then he's not the Christ of the church. If he's not the Messiah of Israel, then he's not the Christ of the church. If he's not the Messiah of the Jewish people, because Messiahship is a Jewish concept, then how can you receive him into your heart as Christ, not understanding that Christ is not, not his last name? I, I, I pray, God, that what, what does it mean to understand that Messiah means king? Let me give you this. And I want to slow down a little bit. So I, want, I don't want you to get this. I don't want you to get anything that was, went, went before. But consider this. As Christians, we define ourselves by our doctrines and beliefs. As Christians, we define ourselves by our doctrine and belief. Yet, we are coming to understand that Christ is not his last name. Christ means the anointed king. Let me slow down and say that. Christ means the anointed king. So whereas we are defining ourselves by what we believe and our teaching, when we say that I'm a disciple of Jesus, the Christ, and you should be saying the Christ, the anointed one, what you are saying is that I acknowledge Yeshua as my king and I submit to his reign. Let me say that again. When you say I accept Jesus Christ, what you ought to understand is that you are acknowledging that he is king, the king of Israel, the king of kings, the king of the Jews. He is king. He's the master of the universe and I submit to his reign rather than Christian nominal title, Christian, what I believe and my teaching, it's different. When you begin to pray, God, there's no, there, there, there's none like our God, there's none like our Savior, there's none like our Lord, there's none like our King. When you begin to pray, King, you begin to realize I'm acknowledging him as King and I'm acknowledging that I, I, I must submit myself to allow him to rule and reign over us. So it, it is wonderful for us to begin to, to consider Messiah. Go with me to Colossians chapter 2. I'm saying that again and again, and I'm challenging us. Don't say Jesus Christ. Grow up and begin to say Jesus the Christ. Why? Because while men slept, we left out the the, and we make it Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And by doing that, we have robbed him of being the true king of Israel because Christ means the anointed king, the king of Israel, the one that God said would come through David. And if you are saying that, it means that you have a Jewish king who's ruling and reigning over you. So how can you want the king of the Jews but want nothing to do with the people, the people of the Messiah? Are you beginning to see the lie that we have to come against and I challenge ministers, stop saying Jesus Christ. Say Jesus the Christ with the understanding that Christ means the anointed king. Then the anointed king that comes from David. 
And don't just acknowledge it and, and don't let the implication of that jump in because we're going to cover that today and you're going to see how when you begin to understand that Jesus Christ is not just about personal salvation but about the salvation of Israel and the salvation of the whole world. Then you begin to understand, oh my God, it's not just Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. It is Jesus, the anointed one. The one whose kingdom will endure forever and ever. Baruch Hashem. Thank you.